Today our topic is take the pressure off. It's easy to get down on ourselves because we're not as far along as we'd like to be. We focus on our flaws, our shortcomings. Why am I not more disciplined? Still struggling with that addiction, being impatient. I'm saying things that I know I shouldn't say. Talk to any counselor, talk to any knowledgeable law enforcement officer, and they will confirm out of their own experience the truth of scripture, quote, as a person thinks in his heart, so shall he be. Fact is, most criminals have a low self-image. Why should they try to live up to anything better? School dropouts, many teens having children outside of marriage, many people living on the margins of society are people who have never come to believe in themselves. So much of our discontent comes from the fact that most of us, tell me if I'm wrong, are more aware of our weaknesses than our strengths. Yes? More aware of our failures than of our successes. More aware of our limitations than our gifts. I can't tell you how many problems that causes. I heard the story of a pastor. He had a bad day at church where he'd mishandled some things, treated people, a little insensitivity, came home that evening frustrated and angry with himself. Now it so happened that his wife had bought him a new suit that day. He tried it on and then he complained bitterly. I can't believe you bought this suit. It looks horrible. The color is wrong. The style is wrong. It doesn't fit. The wife said, okay, 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 I'll take it back. The next day was a great day for the pastor. He accomplished a lot and he corrected some of the mistakes he'd made the previous day. He came home whistling, feeling good about himself, and good about life. He went into the master bedroom. He saw a suit hanging on his closet door. He thought, great, my wife has exchanged that suit for another one. He tried it on. He said, now, this is more like it. Said to his wife, this suit looks good. It feels good. It fits good. It's perfect. You know what she responded, right? You already know what the, where we're going, right? She said, Ernest, that happens to be the same suit you tried on yesterday. <laughs> Isn't that the way it works? When we're unhappy with ourselves, we project that aggravation towards other things and other people. Now, on the other hand, when we feel good about ourselves, we're more loving, we're more patient, we're kind, we're more gracious to everyone that we see. Many of our deep personal problems arise from lack of proper self-respect. The world is full, it's epidemic in the world, people with low self-images. They get up in the morning, they go off to work feeling they have to prove their worth. They must earn the approval and acceptance of others. I tell you, it's a hellish way to live. Down deep, many people believe that they can't do it, that they'll never measure up that they're subpar, below average, getting the short end of the stick. It's just another version of hellish life. They live with this nagging feeling on the inside, something telling them that things are wrong. They don't measure up. They don't have what it takes. I've heard it said, God is the potter and we're the clay. He controls the process. He controls when we change, 
He controls how we change. He controls how fast we change. Now the key is to accept yourself while Krishna is in the process of changing you. He's taken you from glory to glory. Now you have to learn to enjoy the glory that you're in right now. You're not supposed to go through life being against yourself, overanalyzing your faults. Doesn't help you do better. Focusing on your weaknesses will never ever help you to improve. That's just slowing down the process. Most of us have all this pressure on us to change, isn't it? I've got to be more focused. I've got to watch my mouth. I've got to be a better mother, better spouse, better employee, a better employer. And it's good to want to improve. And we should strive for excellence and be growing. But don't get frustrated if it's not happening as fast as you'd like. Some things only Krishna or God can change. And until he gives you the grace to do it, you have to learn to accept yourself where you are. It takes maturity to have peace in the process. And even though you have areas that you need to improve in, you don't end up being against yourself, negative. Your attitude is, Krishna, I have these shortcomings, I want to change, but I trust you as the potter. I know at the right time you'll give me grace, but in the meantime, I'm going to enjoy where you have me right now. The one thing that holds people back is they don't like who they are. There's this war going on on the inside. But the problem with not liking yourself is that you cannot get away from you. You see the problem? You have to live with you. You have to get up in the morning with you. You have to eat dinner with you. Go to work with you, shower with you, take vacations, vacations with you. And if you don't like you, life is going to be pretty miserable. This is a poem by Edward Guest. I have to live with myself, and so I want to be fit for myself to know. I want to be able, as days go by, always to look myself straight in the eye. I don't want to stand with the setting sun and hate myself for the things I've done. I don't want to keep on a closet shelf a lot of secrets about myself and fool myself as I come and go into thinking that nobody else will really ever know. The kind of person I really am, I don't want to dress up in sham. I want to go out with my head erect. I want to deserve all men's respect. And here in the struggle for fame and wealth, I want to be able to like myself. I don't want to think as I come and go that I'm bluster and bluff and empty show. I can never hide myself from me. I see what others will never see. I know what others will never know. I can never fool myself. And so, whatever happens, I want to be self-respecting and conscious free. You may have some shortcomings. We all do. You may have some areas you wish you'd overcome by now. We all do. The good news is you're not a finished product. Krishna is still working on you. He has you on the potter's wheel making and molding you. And it's not up to you. You don't have to live under this constant self-pressure, striving, working, trying to measure up. Krishna is the one who's in charge. You can relax and enjoy your life while Krishna is in the process of changing you. Well, true, I'll feel good about myself when I lose 10 pounds. I'll like myself 
when I break the addiction, when I control my temper better, when I spend more time with my children. The problem with that approach is that when you cross one thing off your list, something additional, something else is going to pop up. You push down a bump in the rug here and another bump comes over there. You overcome this weakness and no sooner do that than God will bring up another area that you need to face up and you need to come up higher in. If you don't enjoy yourself where you are, faults and all, you're going to go through life feeling wrong on the inside, never ever shaking that big sense of disapproval. Our message is that it's very powerful when you can say, I like myself. Yeah, I have areas that I need to improve in. There are things I need to do better, but I'm at peace with who I am right now. I accept myself. I approve myself. I'm happy with the person that Krishna God made me to be. When you do that, in spite of your flaws, you give the enemy, Maya, a nervous breakdown. <laughs> She'd love for you to go through life, focus on everything wrong, magnify everything you don't like. She knows that if you live against yourself, you'll never reach your potential. That condemning voice will keep you from becoming who you were created to be. Krishna is the author and he's the finisher of our faith. Krishna is the author. He breathes life into you. He chose you to be here. He created you with a purpose, with an assignment, things to accomplish. He's not just the author, the creator, but he's also the finisher. And that means that he's going to keep making you, keep molding you, keep giving you the grace to come up higher until he finishes. Now the key is, what do you think? Don't give up in the middle. <laughs> Don't get discouraged while you're being changed. He's in control as long as you're doing your best. You don't have to perform perfectly. You just have to have a heart to do what's right. And then you can be assured that when it's time to change, all the forces of darkness cannot stop you. But there's a requirement for all of this to happen. You have to become good at looking away from anything that will distract you. Focusing on your flaws will distract you from your purpose. Magnifying your weaknesses, what you don't like about yourself, will keep you from your potential. Look away from your flaws and look to your maker. We think when we perform better, then we can approve ourselves. When we get rid of these flaws, overcome this bad habit, be more patient, then we can feel good about who we are. But can I tell you, Krishna already approves you. So why don't you, considering that God approves you, approve yourself? He's not waiting for you to get better. Then he's going to accept you. He knows every shortcoming, every weakness you've ever had. And he says, I still approve you. It's because he's the potter. He knows that these flaws are not going to keep you from your destiny. They're not going to stop your purpose. The only way they'll limit you is if you live down on yourself, feeling wrong, putting on yourself all this pressure, trying to change things that only Krishna can change. Here's our message. Do your best and then rest. He's the potter. He'll work out things that shouldn't be there. Just stay pliable. Stay open. Stay willing to change. But don't be down on yourself just because it's not happening as fast as you'd like. Give yourself permission to have some weaknesses. 
Give yourself the grace not to perform perfectly all the time. Don't misunderstand us. We're not saying to live sloppy, live whimsically, live flippantly. We should dig down. We should be disciplined, be focused, be growing. But don't live pressured, thinking that you have to make it all happen on your own strength. What could you become if you'd quit focusing on all the things that you don't like about yourself and approving yourself? How much further would you go? How much more you'd enjoy your life, taking all the pressure off yourself and learning to trust the potter? Our question today is, are you hyper-focused on your flaws with what you don't like about yourself? Or are you looking away from those distractions? Are you living pressure, thinking you have to make it all happen on your own strength, on your own timing? Or Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Or are you trusting the potter at peace with where you are while he's changing you? You are God's masterpiece. Now, here's an interesting thought. A masterpiece never makes itself. The Mona Lisa had a painter, Da Vinci. Statue of David had a sculpture, Michelangelo. Without Da Vinci, that's just an ordinary canvas. Paint, brushes, no big deal. Without Michelangelo, it's just a big piece of stone. Someone could have looked at it and thought, there's nothing special about this rock. What made the difference was the maker. The good news is that you have a maker, you have a designer. It's not Michelangelo, that's true. It's not Da Vinci. Your maker is the most high God. It's not up to you to become a masterpiece. That's your maker's job. You don't have to st strive, perform, and live under all this pressure. You have a designer who's making you, who's molding you, and he knows exactly what you need, when you need it, where you need it, so you can relax, knowing that you're a masterpiece in the making. In the Bhagavad Gita, 15th chapter, Krishna says, Mamayavam Santi Veloke Jiva Bhutana Sanatanam Manasas Tindriyani Prakriti Shtani Karsati. Krishna says to Arjuna, the living entities in this world are my eternal fragmental parts. Due to conditioned life, they are struggling very hard with the six senses, which include the mind. In this verse, the identity of a living being is very clearly given. He's a fragmental part and parcel of the Supreme Lord eternally. We are parts and parcels of the Lord. We are eternal, not temporary manifestations. The word Prabhupada says, Mamai Vamsha, it's very significant. We are a fragmental portion of the Lord. That means that we're not like some broken artificial part. The fragment of the eternal is also eternal. The fragment of the individual is also an individual. And when that individual fragment is liberated from bodily entanglement, disassociates from the dark and deadness of the, of the material body, he enjoys association in the eternal spiritual world with the Supreme Lord. He's qualitatively one in the Lord, just as particles of gold are one with the gold mine. You may have some flaws, areas in which you need to do better in. You're not finished. The master is still at work. If you were to watch Da Vinci painting the Mona Lisa, there'd be times when you'd think, this doesn't look like much. Just a bunch of black over there and some random colors over there. Looks kind of blah to me. But the artist has an advantage. He can see the picture in his mind. He knows what he's making. 
what looks like a mistake, a flaw, where he's added some more strokes, a little more color, a little more definition, a little more shadowing, it begins to come together. It begins to make sense. And when it all comes together, it's a masterpiece. Same way we have our designer. There are strokes you may not understand. Things that seem like flaws, weaknesses. The color may not make sense. This bad break, why do I have to struggle in this area? By itself, it looks like a mistake, but stay patient. The master is at work. Someone far greater than Michelangelo is working on you. Someone far more skilled than Da Vinci, your maker, created solar systems, galaxies, sunsets, mountain ranges. Sometimes the fact is we're just striving too hard, trying to fix this, be more of that, stay more focused there. And yes, we do have to work with Krishna. But when you recognize that it's not up to you to become a masterpiece, that's up to your designer, then you can relax. You can stay in peace in the process, knowing that even though you have some shortcomings, things you don't like, Krishna is working on you. Krishna is saying to you tonight, I will make you. It's not just up to you. Don't worry so much about what you're dealing with. I'm gonna change things. I'm gonna breathe my freedom, my healing, my favor, my strength. I'm gonna help you do what you couldn't do on your end. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Krishna, Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Ram, Hare Ram. Rama, Rama, Hare Hare. Prabhupada gave a nice example. He said that although fire is pure, right? Fire is pure, but there's always smoke. Fire is pure, but the pure fire is always covered by smoke. And yet that smoke does not take away from the perfection of the fire, does it? Even though there's smoke in the fire, fire is still, in spite of the smoke, considered to be the purest of all elements. Now in the material world, nobody, nobody, nobody can be free from flaws. The example of fire and smoke is exactly appropriate in this connection. When in wintertime, Prabhupada says one takes a stone from the fire, sometimes smoke disturbs the eyes and other parts of the body, but still one must make use of the fire despite any so-called flaws. Similarly, one should be determined to serve the Lord in all circumstances. That is perfection. When service is performed to the satisfaction of the Lord, all the defects in a particular person are nullified. When that person is purified, one becomes perfect in loving. Prabhupada says, at that point, the self within becomes manifested, and that is self realization. Nitya Siddha Krishna Prema Sadhya Karana. Who am I? I am an eternal loving servant of Krishna. And right now, can I tell you, because you've come here tonight, because you attend regularly, you take prasadam, you read scripture, you chant, you are, be assured, right on schedule. You don't have too many flaws, too many imperfections. Krishna has already approved you. He's already called you a masterpiece. You can already, he can envision as the artist, you as a finished product, and he knows exactly what he's making you into. You don't have too much wrong with you. You haven't made too many mistakes. God has already approved you. He's already said, she is very good. He is very good. So why don't we start approving ourselves? Not when we perform better, not when you get it all together, accept yourself while you're in the process of changing. And often we think, oh, not me, Krishna. You don't know who I am. You don't know the things I struggle with. 
I still have these flaws. I still don't perform like I should. Here's a nice example from the Srimad Bhagavatam, fourth canto. The example of Dhruva Maharaj. His stepmother had betrayed him by cheating him out of his rightful kingdom. To address that wrong, Dhruva took his own mother's advice and went to the forest to worship the Supreme Personality of Godhead. After six months of controlling his senses, Dhruva factually saw before him the Supreme Personality of Godhead. He became so enlightened, so purified of any shortcomings and flaws in the presence of the Lord that no sooner did he see the Lord than he gave up all revengeful attitude towards his stepmother and he no longer had any desire for a temporary kingdom in this temporary world. Nevertheless, the Lord was so kind that when Dhruva demanded material benefits, the Lord being present within his heart knew everything about his flaws, his shortcomings. The Lord knows everything. Veda Ham Samaditani Vartamani. He knows past, present, and future. He's in the heart of every living being. He went ahead and fulfilled Dhruva's desires. He did not dismiss, he did not discard, he did not demean Dhruva for his material desires. His revengeful attitude towards his stepmother was gone. His desire for a more exalted position than that of his father was also fulfilled. At the same time, Krishna awarded Dhruva sovereignty over the pole star, which became known after Dhruva himself as Dhruva Loka. It's an eternal planet within this material world. So although Dhruva's sovereignty over a spiritual eternal planet was nothing that he had conceived of, it was far beyond his base material desires. Krishna thought, what will Dhruva do with an exalted position within this material world. So he gave Dhruva the opportunity to rule this unique planet for 36,000 years and after finishing with all of his material desires and satisfying his shortcomings, Dhruva would then, according to the arrangement of the Lord, be promoted to the spiritual world. Now we learn from this story this archetypal story of the boy with all kinds of material desires, that though we may have flaws, don't let them obsess you. Don't think about your flaws all of the time and get distracted from your potential greatness. Cast those thoughts aside. Give it up to Krishna. By chanting his holy names, he will make and mold you. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Well, true, I don't know, man. I'm still struggling in these areas. I should be further along. I'm not as disciplined as I should be. The problem is, you're trying to do it in your own strength, you're trying to be a self made person. Do it all on your own. Change this, fix this. You're going to struggle. It's going to be a constant battle. That's pressure. That's when you feel wrong on the inside. That nagging feeling. Why can't I do better? Our suggestion tonight is try a different approach. Krishna, I have some flaws. I have some weaknesses. But I believe I'm a masterpiece in the making. I know you've approved me. You've accepted me. You've already planned my days for good. I'm going to follow you and let you make me. I'm going to accept myself while you're changing me. I'm going to enjoy the glory that I'm in right now. And when you let Krishna make you, it takes all the pressure off. It's a game changer when you learn to like yourself where you are, knowing that he's in control of the process, he's in control of how fast it happens, then you can enjoy your life while Krishna is working. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, 
Rama, Rama, Hari, Hari. When you're about to step into a new level, Maya, the enemy, will work over time to make you feel unqualified, unworthy, like you don't measure up. Voices will whisper in the night, you're not qualified. Learn to do this. Say to those accusatory voices that come to you in the middle of the night, talk to my maker. You're not strong enough. Talk to my maker. You don't have what it takes. Talk to my maker. You need to be more dynamic. Talk to my nature. You need to have a better personality. Talk to my maker. My challenge today is don't go through life against yourself, feeling wrong on the inside because you're not as far along as you should be. You can still become a masterpiece. You have to put on that approval. You have to know that Krishna God is pleased with you right where you are. He's not shaking his head because you're still dealing with things after all this time. He's going to be the one to help you get free on his timetable. Now, why don't you accept yourself while he's changing you? Being down on yourself is going to do nothing to make you feel better. Until you like who you are, even with the shortcomings, you'll never reach your potential. Take the pressure off. Trying to perform perfectly, then you're going to feel good about who you are. That's going to frustrate you. Do your best and let God take care of the rest. He's the potter, he has you on the wheel, follow him and he will make you. If you do this, I believe you're coming into a new day. Things that have hindered you in the past will hinder you no more. You're about to experience a new sense of freedom, a new sense of wholeness, a new sense of fulfillment, joy, victory. You will become the masterpiece that Krishna created you to be in this life. And next life, you'll go back to home, back to Godhead. Raise your arms with me, if you will. And we'll all say it together. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Thank you very much for your time.
Hare Krishna everyone. I want to thank each and every one of you for coming on this Saturday evening. A big thanks to Chalapu for making the special hour. So it is a I'll be waving your hands. And in a traditional way, Gauri Shant, Hare Krishna. Hey, Mama! 